Hey, what do you know? More breaking quarterback news in the NFL. This time, it's not the quarterback carousel because Jameis Winston is going back to the New Orleans Saints. They're re-signing him on a two-year deal, according to our Jason Lock and Fora. NFL Network reports that contract is worth about $14 million a season. Winston has been in New Orleans for the last two seasons, first as a backup to Drew Brees, then as a starter last season. He was 5-2 and two as a starter. Had a, a pretty good start before he tore his ACL and injured his MCL against the Bucks, ending his season in November. All right, we got our fantasy guys with us. Chris Hassel joined by Jamie Eisenberg and Dave Richard. Guys, uh, I mean, I, we've seen him on the Saints last season. Small sample size, only half a season, but he did look good. He did look very good, you know, especially that opening game against the Packers where he was just yeah. throwing touchdowns, didn't really have to do a lot because the defense was great. But I think you look at now, he steps into this role. Hopefully he's healthy coming off the knee injury. But now he has Michael Thomas, and that's a big upgrade. And so we'll see if the loss of Sean Payton is going to hurt some things. We'll see if the uh, you know, new regime there, Dennis Allen, Pete Carmichael, the guys are going to be calling plays. Uh, are they going to still mess with Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston and have that whole dynamic coming to, you know, to pass again? You have a potential uh, Alvin Kamara suspension based on what happened to him uh, this offseason as well. So you have a few things still at play here. But the fact that Jameis stays in the same system, at least you know, with, with Carmichael calling plays, stays in the same city, if he's 100% with the addition of Michael Thomas, I like this move a lot for the Saints. You know, so keep things in place, and who knows what happens with some of the upgrades on the offensive side because of Thomas being there. I like the move for the Saints, too. I like it for Michael Thomas. I think it gives him real good stability as a number two fantasy wide receiver. I don't know if it gives him the upside to be a number one, though. The one thing I did like about Jameis last year, his touchdown rate was almost 9%. That means he threw a lot of touchdowns without a lot of attempts. If he can keep that up, you know that Michael Thomas is going to fall into good touchdown production, and you know he's going to be the number one target. I just don't think that percentage percentage is going to keep up. I think it actually gets cut in half, which is still going to be okay for Thomas, which is why I think he's a good volume-based number two fantasy wide receiver. Round four, somewhere in that range, is where I would take him. But there's really no one else in this offense I would take except for Alvin Kamara, of course. He's still going to be a first-round pick. Jameis only comes into play as like a number two quarterback, super flex league type of a guy. I would take him ahead of Matt Ryan as of now. If the Colts add some pieces at wide receiver, I'll probably flip that. But for now, Jameis does have a little bit more. That tendency to throw deep, I think it's better for Jameis to get more fantasy points than it does somebody like Matt Ryan. I wouldn't overlook Marcus Callaway, you know, somebody that started to build on, you know, what we thought was going to be a good season in the preseason. Didn't come on until late in the year. That was more with Taysom Hill. But uh, obviously Jameis is a little bit different caliber of quarterback, so hopefully, you know, things change. But, but you know, we, we don't know exactly if Pete Carmichael is going to do the same things that Sean Payton did. You know, this could be a whole new offense that we're looking at here, at least some new wrinkles that we haven't seen. And you also have to figure what's going to happen, which, you know, you, you might get some more breaking news later if Teron Armstead decides to go to Miami. You know, they could be losing a big piece on the offensive line, so that's something to keep an eye on there. Losing some of that protection up front, not exactly the best situation for James. And, and where are we at with Alvin Kamara at this point? I think he's still close to a top five pick in fantasy in full PPR. It's non-PPR where I'm a little bit a little resistant to him because I'm just not sure how many catches he's going to get. Yeah, I'm not sure he's going to get a ton of catches anyway. Just with Jameis Winston there, we've seen it already, that tendency for Jameis. It takes him a while to actually get going to check it to his running back. He doesn't have a good history of that. So I don't think you can look at Alvin Kamara and say, there he goes for another 80 catches again. I think that number, if he plays all 17 games, is closer to 60. But I still think he gets a lot of carries. He had a ton of carries last year. And he still is going to get a lot of touchdowns. And if this new coaching philosophy takes Taysom Hill out, that means more touchdowns for Alvin Kamara. Yeah, the only concern for me is potential suspension, you know, following the altercation after the Pro Bowl. If he is there come week one, he's a top five pick no matter what, no matter the format, no matter anything, because he's still the guy in this offense. You could say Michael Thomas back. You could say Jameis is the quarterback. This is still Alvin Kamara running and whatever he does catching the ball as the best part of this team. So hopefully there's no suspension, hopefully no significant suspension. One or two games, you know, you could deal with that, so we'll take him in the first round. If we're talking four-plus games, then you're going to have to drop him out of the first round, maybe round two, potentially round three. I doubt it, though. More of a round two pick if he's going to miss any time. Jason Lockenfora has confirmed it's two years and $28 million for Jameis Winston to return to the New Orleans Saints, where he got off to a pretty good start last season before tearing his ACL. These are our fantasy guys. Back-to-back uh, -back breaking news segments here on CBS Sports HQ this afternoon. And Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.